We'd like to welcome you to our current event and weekly Bible study for December 24th, 2012. And today we're going to be doing pretty much a continuation of last week's study regarding the Connecticut Newtown shooting because there's so much more information that's come to light even in the last week. And I'm only going to be covering a fraction of that, uh, some of the more major points that are easily verifiable, because there's a lot of other different things that could be covered when we talk about this particular subject right now. <clears throat> there's just no way to cover it all, and there's a lot of things that are kind of um, fringe that that aren't as easily verifiable, so I'm going to try to stick with what's you know easily verifiable regarding this whole matter. The um, <clears throat> I'm going to be doing one of these rapid-fire bullet point type studies. We're going to be covering a lot of different uh, topics regarding this because there's so many I've received just in the last week. Um, the study right now is probably, the PDF when it's finally said and done, is probably about 25 pages just for this week alone. And um, I'm probably covering more actual headings this week than I've ever covered in any teaching. So the first one I saw this week was the new faked rigged CNN poll. Now this came out, uh, I guess, the the 19th, which is about five days ago. So CNN came out with their their faked rigged poll to coincide with all of the Obama gun grabber crowd, where they're saying that 52% of Americans favor major restrictions on guns, or... And this is the big one. Or making all guns illegal. According to a CNN ORC poll. This was this was their top... I haven't heard anybody even talk about this. This was their top story for part of the day on the 19th. 52. Notice, that's a majority. They had to have that in there. Now, I, I don't believe this at all. I think it's a lie from the pit of hell. But they're saying 52% of Americans favor major gun restrictions on guns, but the the or, or making all guns illegal. Right. They're just liars. And, you know, they're of the father of the devil, and he was the father of lies. And so, you know, figures lie and liars figure. That old expression. So this is this is their made up faked poll that they're coming out with here. Uh, <clears throat> now the next little thing is a little picture of um, Fidel Castro, Hitler, Stalin, and Obama, and they're all kind of waving to the crowd. And it says, "All those in favor of gun control, raise your hand." And they're all having their their hand raised, which is very very true. And again, we went into that last week with the genocide chart, and I give you a link to the genocide chart, again, in this particular thing, where it shows you all of the eras in different countries where um, major gun control were enacted. Stalin, Mao Zedong, Pol Pot, uh, and then all of the millions and millions of deaths that occurred in those countries that were disarmed afterward. It's like clockwork. It is the main thing that is the uh, precipitator. It is the linchpin for mass genocide. And it's been documented over and over and over again when they take the guns away from a population. When you take the guns away from, from the lawful part of that population, I don't mean the criminal element, I mean the lawful part of that population, Mass genocide always, always happens every time. It's a matter of time. It might not happen overnight, but it will eventually happen. So there's been documented case after documented case of this happening. And even if there's a country right now that's been disarmed, you know, the film's still being developed. We, we, you know, you, you can guarantee, you can look at historical records and know how that's going to end up and how that's going to turn out. And that's how we know something is evil. A, a tree is known by its fruit. 
Okay, so what we see the fruit of this gun control and banning weapons and only what what ends up happening is the only thing that that will do is put the guns, concentrate them in the hands of the criminals and in the hands of the criminal government that wanted to enact those legislations in the first place. Satan's essentially the uh, father of this secular world, you know, that we live in, and he is going to go after the leadership and try to control the leadership to as much extent. Well, I mean, obviously they're not controlled by the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, I don't mean that they're that God doesn't sit on the throne and rule this universe. I don't mean it that way, but I mean that Satan is going to target those leaders. And influence them. And obviously, if you look at the fruit of the, of the coming one world government that we're moving into, obviously it's wicked and it's evil. You know, sure, God could intervene if, if, if he wanted to, but he gives us free will. They've chosen to, to serve their father, the devil, and he's going to target these leaders. And he, and this is a, this is an agenda Satan always has to enact gun control on a mass scale to take the guns out of the hands of the lawful law-abiding citizens, and they're going to only end up with the criminal element and then the murdering government at that point as it degenerates and as it goes into um, further wickedness. So this is what we have as a precedent. Now, in 1933, Adolf Hitler said, quote, to conquer a nation, first disarm its citizens, end of quote. That's all you have to know. You want to conquer a nation? First, disarm it says, give, make, make it so that they cannot defend themselves in any way, shape, or form. So we can kick in their doors and do whatever we want to them, and we're not going to have to re- worry about return fire. Because we've confisc- confiscated all the weapons, or the, or the guns in this particular case. So, um, here's a picture, and it's entitled, Why There Are No Shootings in Israeli Schools. And it shows a teacher in the back of a, of a uh, I mean, it's a real picture, and it shows a, a teacher, and she's in, uh, I guess they're taking a tour of some place there in Israel. And there's kids, I don't know, they're probably, I don't know, third grade around there, a whole group of them. And she's in the back of this group, and she's got a some type of um, rifle that is literally around her, like she's carrying it like on a sling. And this is, uh, we're going to talk more about that a little bit later, specifically about Israel and, and um, their their uh, gun policies over there. But again, how much of a deterrent would that have been had this shooter or shooters, which I believe it is now, we're going to look at that as well, and this whole Connecticut shooting, how much of a deterrent would that have been? Knowing that they're going to face return fire coming into the school. No, it was a gun-free zone, which virtually assured that there was no return fire coming. They could come in there, kill, maim, do whatever they want, and not have to worry about getting shot back at. It's a magnet for that type of activity. Basically, let's put up a big sign saying, we're defenseless, bad guys. Like, it's like throwing chum in the water to a shark. I'm sure that won't attract a shark, you know. Shark would never do anything bad. He's your buddy. He's your pal. Um, a Gallup poll was actually released, and I believe this is an accurate one, saying 64% of Americans want school officials armed to protect children. 64% of Americans want school officials armed to protect children. Which would make sense. Okay? I mean, you have your child, if there are random people in the faculty that are armed, and all schools have this policy in America, which is the way it should be, then we're going to have a ton less of, you know, these these types of events happening. And we're going to talk about that more today. So, <clears throat> Next report, another perspective, arm the teachers and the school staff. If someone were truly wanting to solve the problem of school shootings, they would allow various random staff members to carry guns. 
and they would post signs allowing intruders and potentially violent students to know that they will not get very far if they plan on carrying out an attack. Allowing random staff members a choice to carry weapons instead of mandating all teachers do so, or mandating them not, would bring an extra element of security to the equation because no one would know which teachers were armed and which ones were not, forcing them to assume that they all are. It's so simple. The solution. For an attacker, knowing that they are walking into a firing squad can be a very strong deterrent. You better believe it. On the other hand, under our current no-gun school zone policies, attackers are given the message that the whole building will be defenseless. Very simple solution here. Here's a thing. Um, while reports of another report here, uh, while reports of Tuesday shooting at the Clackamas Town Center Mall in Oregon dominated the national media until Friday's horrific shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut, one very important detail has been repeatedly and intentionally left out by the by the mainstream media coverage. The shooter, Jacob Tyler Roberts, when finally confronted by an armed citizen, ran away and shot himself. By the time the police arrived on the scene, Roberts was already dead. So here's one guy. This guy goes into this Clackamas Center Mall in Oregon. The shooter. One guy, when he finally gets confronted by one guy with a weapon, the shooter being the coward that he is, runs away and shoots himself. He's probably a mind control slave that was triggered and and his suicide program kicked in. Because this is how they designed them. This is why the vast majority of the time, these guys end up dead. If they're not, if if the police don't kill them, they they kill themselves. You know, which is what typically happens. Happened, you know, with the Sandy Hook thing as well. So, it's a suicide program. These are MK Ultra mind control sites. You know, you don't believe that MK Ultra is a reality. I mean, the CIA has admitted to it. There, there, there's been documents that have been declassified, and that was going way, way back decades ago. And you think that they don't have that refined at a much higher level now, and they're still not doing it because obviously we're moving toward righteousness and we're moving toward purity and we're moving toward goodness in our government, and we would never ever do anything like this in in the black ops portion of our government. So, this is just one example. There are thousands of examples of this type of thing where one person who has a concealed carry or an off-duty cop or, or, or whatever, a cop or whatever, they take care of the situation. And he didn't even have to take care of the situation. He was just confronted by a guy who was armed. The guy runs away and shoots himself. Um, here's a whole link to... Uh, entitled Mass Killing Stopped by Armed Citizens. I mean, you want to know, you want to see some examples, you don't believe it? Oh, there's a whole (laughs) website devoted to it. You can click on that link. Here's the next story. Um, Numerous school massacres stopped by gun owners who wielded their weapons in defense of children. In the midst of the anti-gun hysteria following the senseless murder of 26 people at Sandy Hook Elementary, one story that is repeatedly overlooked is how often a firearm has been used to save lives and stop senseless murders. You know, I mean, apart from God intervening in a situation like this, it's pretty much the preferred tool to stop something like this from happening. You know? I mean, it just is. But, again, the media just wants to focus on the gun, and the gun's in the hands of the criminal, and then use that as an excuse to take it away from everyone, so that everyone will be defenseless. You know, which is the exact opposite of the obvious solution. So, the next report, um, man attempts to open fire on a crowd at movie theater, armed off-duty sheriff deputy drops him with one bullet. With one shot, an off-duty sheriff's deputy took down a gunman who attempted to open fire. Now, these are just all stuff that's come out in the last week. Okay, just, this stuff happens all the time. Um, An off-duty sheriff deputy took down a gunman who attempted to open fire at a crowded movie theater lobby during a late-night showing of The Hobbit in San Antonio. So, there's another example. Here's an audio teaching by um, Pastor Adams 
and it's called Newtown's Massacre, Obama's Hypocrisy. And there's a link here if you want to listen to it. And the verbiage says, shortly after the news of the massacre dominated the network media this past Friday, President Obama appeared on network TV to make a scripted, emotional speech that was very well written and fairly well presented. But sadly, it overshadowed and nullified by gross, the gross hypocrisy of the one who presented it. The audio message explains why Obama's expression of sympathy for innocent victims was a deception, but also what Obama must do if he wants to prove to this nation that he cares about the innocent lives of victims, which he has no interest in that at all. If Obama means what he says and truly plans to take, quote, meaningful action to prevent more tragedies like this, regardless of the politics, and that was a quote by him, then he must start by ending the mindless slaughter of of millions of other innocent victims for which he bears personal responsibility. From the daily slaughter of thousands of innocent unborn children in the abortion you know, clinics, uh, to the slaughter of hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians in illegal foreign wars, um, victims who also, in Obama's words, had their entire lives ahead of them, birthdays, graduations, weddings, uh, and kids of their own. And if Obama means what he says, he must also begin an initiative to fix the very public schools that caused this epidemic. Uh, when they replace the Bible, prayer, and creation science in the classrooms with their godless religion of atheistic evolution. True. My comment, but he won't, obviously, as he is of his father the devil and of his lust and of his works. Obama will do. I understand he's a puppet on a string and his handlers, he's taking orders from his handlers, but he is pure evil. I don't think any of us can uh, argue that point at this point. But, so anyway, um, some good points brought up there regarding this whole situation. Now, next report, Americans in denial about school violence and the obvious solution, which is armed school personnel. When he took to the microphone to suggest that in the wake of yet another horrific school shooting, it is past time to arm qualified educators so that they can better protect their young children, he raised more than a few eyebrows. Uh, this was an outside-the-box solution made by the very law and order type of guy. Here was the police chief of St. Louis County in the days after the Sadie Hook Elementary School massacre actually recommending that it was high time teachers and other education professionals be given the ability to carry firearms on campus for self-defense and the defense of children they are entrusted with. That's the solution, obviously. Then he goes on to say, now this is the police chief of St. Louis County. He'll probably be gone, with, he's probably already gone by now because he made this, these remarks, but then he goes on to say, quote, we can talk on the back end of the need for funding of mental illness programs and gun control, but as a law enforcement officer, I'm focusing on that five minute window that it takes for cops to get there while people are getting killed. Now, again, five minutes, that's... I mean, you, 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 there's no way you can guarantee that kind of window, you know. So it could be a whole lot longer. Uh, so he's, but he's focused on that window that it takes for cops to get there while people are getting killed. You know, I mean, this gun-free zone. Okay, we, we're defenseless. Come in and kill as many of us until the cops get here to finally stop you. Essentially, is what you're saying, you know, which is total insanity. And this is this was said by uh, Police Chief Tom Fitch. Then he goes on to say. Quote, there is something out there right now, there's somebody out there right now trying to figure out how to do something even worse than this guy did. True. And there is only one way to end that threat, and that's with lethal force. End of quote. Yep. Absolutely. I got this from a listener uh, named Matt, and it's, it's entitled, Why I Carry a Gun. <clears throat> I found this on one of the forums I'm a member of. It is well written and sums up why I carry and thought you would enjoy it. It says, quote, I do not carry a firearm because it is my right. I do not carry because I'm afraid. I do not carry because I'm paranoid. I do not carry because I'm trying to make a statement. I'm not being political. I'm not being religious. I do not carry a gun because I want to frighten, intimidate, or kill. I carry a gun because there is genuine evil in the world. I carry a gun because most people are not equipped to deal with that evil. I carry a gun because the police mostly respond to crime. They do not prevent it. I carry a gun because there are some that cannot defend themselves. Some threats are too fearsome, too strong, and too evil. 
I carry a gun because I am willing to stand between you and that evil. I carry a gun expecting that someday I may have to use it and praying that I will never have to. Well said. You know, we're supposed to defend the fatherless and the innocent. A righteous, particularly man, there's all kind of Bible verses that talk about that. About defending those that cannot defend themselves. And that that is a no-brainer as a Christian. Period. You don't let just evil come in and just, you know, slaughter little kids right in front of you and you just sit back and do nothing. There's, I'm sorry, there's no Bible for that. I don't see any Bible for that at all. You defend the fatherless. You defend the widow, widows. You defend the orphans. You defend those that cannot defend themselves. That's biblical. You know, and I don't mean like, okay, you're like Rambo and you're in some kind of fit of rage and you're doing this in a vengeful way. I'm just talking about defending the innocent, which is righteous and godlike. You know, and, and this is why I keep harping on this point because there's so much disinformation and there's all these political talking heads saying we've got to do this and we've got to do that. And all they are are a tool of Satan spewing out lies and venom to try to deceive the masses, the sheeple people for the most part, that, you know, are not to say that a lot of them, are, tons of them aren't going along with this as well, and we're going to look at that as well. So, next report. Let's, let's, uh, let's let the facts guide the gun control debate for change. With recent horrible shootings around the nation, the left wing, led by President Obama, some members of the Senate and the House, and most of today's media are screaming for new gun control laws. But what would the consequences of such laws be? A study done by the Justice Department in 1999 analyzed the 1994 assault weapons ban and concluded it did nothing to reduce crime or shootings. The Justice Department stated, quote, the ban has failed to reduce the average number of victims per gun murder incident, or multiple gunshot wound victims, end of quote. No wonder the Congress allowed a useless gun ban to go into the sunset after 10 years. It didn't work, period. Despite that fact, we, despite the fact we have new incidents where innocents were murdered, gun murders themselves have drastically dropped over the last two decades. Why is this? Noted gun crime author and statistician, Dr. John R. Lott attributes much of this to the increase in concealed carry permits issued nationwide to ordinary citizens, which now allow them to carry weapons for personal protection and for the protection of others, which is really the main, I think, the main reason, protection of others. Because it shouldn't ever really be about yourself. It should be about others, you know. Like Jesus Christ said, let them that is greatest among you, let him be your servant. You know? And greater love hath no man than this, and then he would lay down his life for his friend. I mean, if you're willing to, to, to um, defend someone with a gun, you're, you're most likely risking your life if you've been brought to that point. So you're willing to lay down your life for someone, you know, Showing them you are their true, like the Bible talks about. Who was the, in the, um, the the parable in, in the Bible regarding, you know, who was the better neighbor? You know, well, you're showing that, you know, you are acting in a unselfish Christian way when you defend innocence, not even uh, thinking about your own life, that type of thing. So, the um, going further, it says these laws... Have meaning the concealed carry laws have reduced crime because potential perpetrators don't know who is carrying for personal protection. So there's always that thing in the back of a criminal's mind: Hey, I could be in here, and there might be X amount of people that have a weapon on them, concealed carry, and if I, you know, rob this place or do this or do that, you know, I could get shot. And then it goes on to say, in fact, according to FBI data, U.S. murders dropped nearly 40% to 14,478 in 2010, which is a significant drop from 23,440 from 1990. 40% drop in murder rates. 
even as the overall population grew by 24%. So actually, it's way more than a 40% drop if you consider the population growth. And this can be directly attributed to the concealed increase in concealed carry permits. What else could it be? It's, it's sure not that we're getting more holy and righteous. So it goes on to say, this, this may be why Dr. Lott's most famous book is now titled More Guns, Less Crime. Okay, More guns, I think you should preface that, more guns in the hands of, of law-abiding people, less crime. Okay. I, I, I went over last week what they did in Kennesaw, Georgia. <laughs> Hasn't been one, one murder there and I don't know you know how many whatever decades now. Because the head of the household is, is mandated in that particular town to have a firearm. And they know it. So of all places in Georgia that you would want to go to try to create problems with a gun, you're probably the, the, the last on your list is going to be Kennesaw, Georgia. <laughs> so Again, proving that that um, you know the exact opposite of what these politicians are saying is actually the truth. But again, that's never spouted off. That's that's all of that stuff is suppressed. You're only going to hear the lies, okay? And again, it's all the the big push on this is to get us to disarm so that they can come in and truly implement the genocide, the depopulation that people like Ted Turner. And, um, you know, Ted Turner calling for up to, uh, well, he's at 500 million to the Audubon interview that he did a long time ago. 500 million, you're, you're approaching a 95% reduction in population. And that, that guy's pure evil. I mean, just look at an interview with the guy. I mean, the guy, he can't even hide it. He did an interview the other day, and, and the guy asked him, he said, talking about the, the troops dying in, um, uh, like Afghanistan and in the Middle East, our troops. And he says, oh, that's a good thing. And he kind of laughed about it. And then he went on to like justify why he said it was a good thing, but he, he literally said it was a good thing. I mean, the guy is sick. But these globalists, this is what they want. They want mass depopulation on a global level. The Georgia Guidestones said, oh, actually, Georgia Guidestones says reduce world population. The first commandment, which is the, the Ten Commandments of the coming New World Order, essentially, Reduce world population to 500 million. Ted Turner said we needed to have it down to 250 to 300 million in the Audubon interview. And that's just a couple different things. So they realize they have got to disarm America in particular before they can really fully, because they don't really want people firing back. They, they, they want to minimize the bloodbath. They, they want to have the bloodbath where it's just totally one-sided where the wicked can come in and just wholesale slaughter man, women, children, and not really have to worry about being fired back at. That's their agenda. This is exactly why they're doing all these things and why they're creating these situations so that they can ultimately take away the guns and then come in and do do as they please. So, obviously, that's a big reason why I'm doing what I'm doing, to just point that out, because it's very, very obvious what the agenda is here. So, next report. Solution to the school mass murders. Free concealed handgun license classes to teachers and administrators. The tragic event that happened this past Friday made many realize that gun-free zones will not stop the criminal element. In fact, it will only encourage them. We are supportive of legislation allowing teachers to carry a concealed handgun in the school if they desire. I mean, they're not mandating it, but I mean, if you have a regular school, there's going to be a certain amount of people that are going to want this, especially now, okay? To show our support, now this is the guy putting this on, to show our support to this movement, we are offering free concealed handgun classes to any teachers and administrators until uh, January 6, 2013. Please pass this on to anyone that, you know, that may be interested in this LoneStarHandgun.com. And it has a picture here. It says, faced with mass murder in class, teachers are now told to throw a book at the killer. So a guy comes in with a with a with an M16 or whatever, and the teachers are said, throw a book at him. Oh, that'll that'll stop it every time. I mean, that'll definitely stop it. We don't have to. We don't have to be a physics major to know lead would work much better, meaning gunfire. 
Okay, how many more must die before self-defense becomes legal? And it's and that's their their ad. Now here's another one that's very similar, and this is from Front Sight Firearms Training, and it's entitled "I Told You So" in 1999 and every year since. And this is from um, this is from the guy at Dr. Ignatius Piazza, who is the president of Front Sight. I'd really like to take this class. It, it looks excellent. I mean, it's just very, very, very comprehensive. And I mean, obviously, if you're going to have a gun, you need to get trained. You need to get proper... Uh, and I, I, I grew up around guns. Okay, My, my dad was a, was a very, very highly ranked combat pistol shooter in the state of Florida. I mean, the, the guy would you know, sit there for hours and do you know, reloading and all kind of stuff. I mean, the guy would go out sometimes and burn up 2,000 rounds of ammo in, in a single day. He was serious about it at one time, and um, he pretty much won everything in our area. I mean, he was like, it, he rose very quickly. I mean, there was a lot of guys who have been doing it for years. My dad had a real knack for it, and I mean, I can remember a two, three-year period where he was just winning everything in our particular area, and guy, beating out guys doing uh, it's combat pistol shooting um, that had been doing it for years and years and years. He was very good. Um so, I've grown up around it. It doesn't mean, though, that we, we can't all get training to, you know, refine what we might know, regardless of your level of, of uh, education. So, this is entitled, for, for immediate release, please forward this to your local newspapers, radio stations, and television news stations. Of course, I'm sure they've all been told, don't, don't release anything like this. We would definitely not want to put out the true solution to the whole Sandy Hook thing. No. We, we want to keep that totally under wraps, undercover, and make sure nobody knows about it. It says, back in 1999, I gave our nation the solution to stop innocent children from being slaughtered. Every year since then, I have given the nation the solution. Isn't it time our nation allows Front Sight to provide the solution free of charge? Now, here's another organization offering free of charge to train the teachers, the administrators, the faculty in the school of in this particular case, they're offering to do it for the whole nation. I guess he's got enough of an infrastructure where they can do this. Free of charge. I don't know how much more above board the guy can be. He says, I'm angered that more children have to die when I have the solution for every school in America, and I am even willing to pay for it. Subject, gun control for teachers. Las Vegas, Nevada. In the wake of yet another senseless school massacre, I ask all our politicians law enforcement officials, and school administrators, one simple question. When are we going to wake up as a nation and protect our children? How many more children have to die before we will find the fortitude as a nation to put in place real policies that will stop deranged gunmen in their tracks before he can commit mass murder on innocent and defenseless children? How many times do I have to offer the nation the solution? But see, you know, this nation is under, you know, satanic... Satanic spell. They don't want the solution. They don't want righteousness. They would rather choose evil. And and again, this is just more proof of this because the nation isn't heading in this direction. Now, I'm not obviously making a blank, blanket statement about everyone. I'm just saying the, the nation at large isn't really moving in this direction. Then he goes on to sell, say, uh, what is wrong... What is wrong with the leaders of our country? Uh, Make the right decision to protect our children, not more of the wrong decisions that will create the opportunity for the next lunatic to murder at will with zero resistance. Once again, Front Sight Firearms Training Institute arguably is the world's leader in providing intensified courses in the defense of firearms for private citizens, has the answer to stopping further attacks on school children. Front Sight will once again offer free firearms training to any school administrator, teachers, or full-time staff members designated as school safety monitors. Uh, Front Sight will accept the training for up to three staff members from each school, college, or university. Applicants must submit a letter requesting training on school letterhead signed by the top school district official and designating the applicant as the school safety monitor. Please forward this email to your state and federal legislators 
local law enforcement departments, and your child's child's school administrator, as well as your friends and family asking them to do the same. But see, the government would have no interest at all in this happening because they don't want to prevent this stuff. They want to exploit every single event like this, which they created, and we're going to look at that in a second, so that they can get their order out of chaos. Ordo ab cal, the, the motto of the 33rd degree Freemason. They're wanting to bring about their new world order, genocide, out of the chaos they are creating on purpose. So, again, then it goes on to say, my offer is not a new idea. In the early 70s, Israel was faced with a much greater problem of armed terrorist attacks on schools. Of course, because those those cowardly devil Muslims, I mean, they don't care. Killing the little kids, that's that's all the better for them. You know, as long as they're as long as they're an Israelite, hey, we need to kill them. They need to die. And so they had a real problem in the early 70s. Israel was faced with much greater problems of armed terrorist attacks on schools. The cry for more gun control was heard then too. But Israel very carefully analyzed all possible options before adopting the proactive position of arming and training their teachers. School shootings stopped and terrorists looked for easier targets. Because they're cowards. They're of the father of the devil. And he's a coward. And that's why they do it. They want an easy... They're lazy too. And they want an easy, juicy target that's just not going to resist. Gun control never has and never will stop criminals and madmen from carrying out acts of violence. And here's that same picture. I, I kind of redundant, it, but I reposted the same picture of the lady standing in the back of the school... Um, little school tour they were taking and she's she's armed she's got a gun uh, and it says here's the reason why there are no school shootings in israel uh, the problem is not guns guns don't cause these incidents to occur any more than cameras cause child pornography or automobiles cause traffic fatalities think about that one for a second okay are we going to demonize cameras because there's child pornography in the world are we going to demonize automobiles because there's traffic fatalities well it's the same when you demonize guns Again, the guns just don't sprout two little legs and kind of go around and kill people. Israel has the right answer. Society is safer when we train and arm our law-abiding citizens. As the defense training leader in the USA, Front Sight is willing to be able to set the example for the rest of the country. And then they've got some little signs that if you want to buy them, uh, I guess a yard sign says, nothing inside is worth dying for. Now, the, you, you could say, well, this is crazy, but these signs are huge deterrents to crime. Just like if you put up, like, ADT stickers on your, if you've got an alarm system. It's a proven fact that, that a uh, thief is going to typically move to a, uh, a location where it's going to be easier to break into. So, again, you know, it's kind of like a no-brainer type of thing here. Uh, and they've got window decals and things like this. All, all you're doing at this point is preventing a crime from occurring, or potentially preventing it. It is time we wake up and start providing real protection for our children in schools. Front Sight stands ready, willing and able to train every teacher in America. If that is what it takes, help us protect your children by demanding your school send their teachers to Front Sight. You know, here's the solution. That's what I try to give you every week. I'm, I'm trying to give you reconcile biblical current event or current events, end time current events, with the Bible, so you can kind of make sense of everything, and then also give you solutions. What is the what is the solution? I mean, obviously we know what the solution is here. It's real. It's real simple. You know. I mean, you think that if this was implemented, if teachers were trained in the schools and were armed, and let's say within I don't know X amount of period of time, every teacher, every school in America had armed faculty. Now, not all of them, but just some. Do you know what the, the, how the, that would affect the actual crime rate in these schools? Guaranteed, it would, it would drop like a rock because of the deterrent. You know, that the, the criminals would know, okay, they're going to be facing return fire. They're going to move on to an easier target, bottom line. Every time. So, again, um, and then I give you the uh, contact information, their address, uh, their website. It's 
www.frontsiteoneword.com, and then their email address and their 800 number. So, I, I, I'm not like a member of them or anything, but I've kind of admired um, them from afar and thought that they and they've got all kind of training. If if you want to get any type of firearm training. It's probably one of the most comprehensive programs. A lot of people fly out there, they spend like a week or two or whatever, and they really, really get versed in a lot of different facets of firearms and things of this nature. And then those people can come back and help others as well. You know, a responsible, responsible use of firearms, how to handle them and that type of thing. So the next one is um, a video that you can watch, and I'm not going to play it because it's silent, but it's a video reveals an astonishing way to easily stop massacres in mere seconds. The video is only, like I think, like a minute and a half, maybe. It requires, this video re- will show you how it requires no police or 911. It requires no taxpayer expense. It can be deployed anywhere. Begins working as little as five seconds. Protects innocent lives, which is really what this is all about. Okay, spread the word. Concealed carry saves lives, and it's this in this video of some like online or uh, some kind of like um, little gaming place where people are in there. I'm assuming gambling or something, and these two uh, devils come in with wearing masks, and they've got like their big guns and stuff, and they're like, "Okay, everybody, you know, stick your hands up," and uh, I guess they they go around and start robbing everybody in this one. Uh, Senior citizen guy, I mean, he's probably in his 60s, late 50s, 60s. As soon as the guy has his back turned, he pulls his little concealed, it looks like a little revolver, out and shoots the guy. And you want to see a guy, and I don't know if he hit him, but you want to see a, a couple of devils, little cowardly devils, freak out and and just go nuts to try to get out of there. It is absolutely hilarious watching these guys try to get out this building. You see what little yellow cowards they really are right then when they're actually confronted with return fire. Okay? And again, these guys could have come in there and potentially who knows what might have ended up happening. They could have killed a whole bunch of people. This guy with one little revolver prevented all of that, who had a backbone in him. So anyway, you can watch the video. It's very, very short. It's, it's um, it pretty much hammers home what I'm saying here. So going further, next now we're going to shift into more of the, okay, I said a lot, but why am I saying this? Okay, Are they making some kind of push to get our guns? Well, let's look at that. Representative Sheila J- Jackson Lee, of a Democrat from Texas, on Wednesday afternoon urged people to turn in their guns, arguing it would be an appropriate response to last week's mass shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. An appropriate response? Are you a moron? That's the last thing people need to be doing in light of this shooting. No, no, let's just be knee-jerk. Well... They use guns, so turn in your guns. That is the stupidest, most asinine thing I've ever heard. Well, maybe not the most, but it's right up there. She says, I would personally just say to those who are listening, maybe you want to turn in your guns, Jackson Lee said on the House floor. Uh, Then she says, oh no, I'm not going to take your guns. Yeah, right. Then she goes on to say, but look at what Dick's Sporting Goods did. They wanted to be part of the solution and part of America. I, I'm i done with, with dicks. Anyway, I'm done with them. Not to say I was in there all the time anyway, but I'm just saying. Companies do this. You don't support them. They, they've, they're they not going to sell any more guns now. Oh, that's really smart. The, the, the people that are... A criminal is not going to go to dicks and buy something... And have it registered under his name, and then go use it in the in the in the um, to commit a crime with. They're going to get an unregistered weapon they bought off the street that's had the serial numbers gnawed off it, and then get rid of it after the crime's been committed, most likely. So what they're saying this is this is part of the solution, part of America. No, it's not. It's a lie from the pit of hell. But again, 
But so she's basically, you know, saying this. It says Dick's Sporting Goods announced this week that it would stop selling and displaying guns at its store closest to Newtown. And it would suspend the sale of modern sporting rifles nationwide out of respect for the victims of the shooting. Yeah, because we need to take more guns out of the hands of law-abiding citizens because we want more mass crime and we want more little children to be slaughtered is basically what they're saying. It's the exact opposite of what they should be doing. But we must be politically correct. You know, we, we mustn't, you know, now because there's all these people mourning, we just need to keep our mouths shut, the gun owners, and we need to just shut up and just go along with gun control because obviously that could be the only solution. That's what they're expecting. I'm going to do the exact opposite. It's tragic. It's horrific. What And, and I do, my, my heart goes out to those families. Okay, but I'm going to still give you the solution of how this could have been prevented. I'm not going to just keep my mouth shut to be politically correct because I want to be, you know, respect the um, the feelings of the families. I'm telling them what needed and what should have been. And if what I'm proposing would have been in place, this whole disaster would have most likely either never happened or been minimized to a huge degree. But it was planned. It was staged. And we're going to look at that as well. It wasn't intended to be minimized. It was intended for this very purpose to elicit the maximum amount of shock and awe, which is a term the Illuminati likes to use, to bring their order out of chaos so that they could polarize the nation and then come in like the devils that they are and say, oh, look, look we've got to turn in our guns. It's the guns' fault. Next article. Stampeding gun control through crisis. Never let a good crisis go to waste. That's their motto. They've said that before especially when it's an opportunity to abridge our constitutional rights. Predictably and right on cue, Bloomberg, Mayor Bloomberg of New York, and others instantly started screaming for massive gun control in the wake of the Newtown shooting. Clamors to change the Second Amendment, to evoke executive orders, and to even kill the leaders of the NRA, the National Rifle Association, abound. I am appalled, yes, I am appalled about the slaughter, but I am more appalled that the first response from the professional control freaks, the political animals across the nation, is to initiate the long-planned campaign to stampede Americans into surrendering their rights to disarm all people who didn't even murder anyone. Again, they're going to take the the, the guns out of the hands of the law-abiding citizens, which assures they're just going to totally then be in the hands of the criminals, And the rogue government, which is turning more rogue every day. And most importantly, to eliminate the ability of citizens to even defend themselves from the whole spectrum of evils ranging from common bad guys to government tyranny. Senator Feinstein has pledged to submit new assault weapons legislation, even more draconian than the last completely useless ban, the one that had no effect on crime other than to create new classes of victims, which we already went over that, how that had no effect at all. Senator Feinstein, evidently in an effort to avoid accusations that this new bill is a knee-jerk response to the shootings, assures us that she has been working on this bill for a year. Now, again, another thing I think, the, the probably the most important thing about this is to pray about this, you know, To pray that that if it be the Lord's will, if it be the Lord's will, because it may not. I understand evil men and seducers are waxing worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We are going into the new world order under Antichrist and the false prophet. It's going to get worse. And it may not be God's will to stop this. You know, when you got 60 million plus aborted babies, in the, I mean, you know, the blood of the innocent... It's crying out from the lands. You got the sodomite lobby and, and so many wicked things going on in America. This is most likely just part of God's judgment. But again, still, when we see evil, you know, we're supposed to, to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but to reprove them, to make, manif- make them manifest, meaning to shed light on them, to point out the obvious, and, and, and to bring forth truth and righteousness. And this is what we're trying to do today here. We're just trying to point out what is righteous, what is, what is truth here 
regarding this matter. So it goes on to say, contemplate that for a moment. The new bill has been poised to launch for months, waiting only for the inevitable next horrific incident or an appropriate tragedy to then whip this solution out. Meaning they've had this all planned. And it's no coincidence that this happened after Obama has just been elected for his second term, where he's not going to have to worry about getting reelected again. He didn't want something like this to happen, and a push like this that we're going to see, they didn't want something like this to happen before he was reelected, even though they totally rigged that election, and it was a total fabricated piece of garbage, vote rigging garbage, and I, I, I did a whole teaching where we pointed out that out as well. They still wanted to wait until after the election, because that was something that was just one more factor that would have muddied the waters. Now, because he's already in, they didn't waste a whole lot of time staging an event like this so that they could pull the trigger, particularly wait to see what happens after the start of the year, on this new legislation, you know, and they're going to they're gonna try to get as much traction on this as possible. Problem is, is that this is going to continue to happen. This, I mean, there's just another one today. There, now, every time there's any kind of shooting in the nation, now they're featuring that. CNN especially is probably one of the worst media whores. It's one of the ones I kind of check because I just want to see what the media whores are doing on a daily basis. And again, there was one today, some firefighters were called with something and... and it was it was a it was a planned um, ambush or something where they killed a couple firefighters and it's the guns' fault. It's the guns' fault always. You know we just got to ban the guns. They are going to keep highlighting this. There's going to be more sh- school shootings. There's going to most likely be more children killed, and they're going to be screaming louder and louder and louder for the very thing that's going to make it worse and worse and worse. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying to expect, and that's why I say, you know, this is obviously a spiritual battle, uh, literally good against evil, and we should be praying about this. So, I think I'll just read this again. The new bill has been poised to launch for months, waiting only for the inevitable next horrific incident or appropriate tragedy, tragedy to then whip this solution out while stampeding a brainwashed populace into accepting yet another do something law that constrains honest people while not even addressing the actual problem. The senseless slaughter of 20 little ones is the perfect political platform for shoving fascist policies down our throats. The media will trot out every profile of every child and teacher who died to engender guilt, horror, and remorse and bully Americans into letting go of their guns. And they've been doing this in spades. I mean, it's just... Every, oh, okay, two more people got buried. And, and they're doing it. It's almost like they're, they're even doing the burials real slowly, like over time. So it's constantly in the forefront of our thinking pattern. Oh, it's the gun's fault. It's the gun's fault. We got to ban the guns. We got to ban the guns. Well, what, you're, you're not, you're not American. What are you, some kind of animal? You want to keep guns on the street? You know, this is the whole brainwashing rhetoric that we're constantly, uh, this constantly being shoved down our throat now. Okay, next report. Obama seems poised to declare military dictatorship in America over Sandy Hook Elementary shooting. And yet another masterful bit of presidential theater Obama took to the airwaves Sunday night to declare his, quote, love for children. Yet, he's the most pro-abortion senator and president ever on record, ever. Okay, voting to go so far as that if a woman who wanted to abort their baby, actually was able to deliver the child that they need to kill the child outside the womb. Which I think is the way that all abortions, if you're going to have an abortion, all of them should be forced to do that. Well, that's barbaric. No, 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 no. You know how many less babies would end up being killed? And it should be the mother and the father forced to actually kill their own baby. After they've delivered it. Guaranteed that would way reduce the abortion rate. When you realize it wasn't a mass of fetal tissue. You should be forced to deliver the baby to term. And then, okay, if you still want to abort your baby. It's sitting there crying and, and it's wanting its mommy. You know. Okay, here, here's, here's a knife. You go ahead and do it. We're going to walk out of the room. It's your responsibility. Well, that's barbaric. No, it's not. It, you, I guarantee you. Guaranteed. You would have 
I don't know how, how much it would reduce the abortion rate, but it would be on a massive scale. It would prevent a ton of innocent babies. That devil in the White House is the most pro-abortion, most pro-sodomite, homosexual, gay, transgender, lesbian, bi- anything evil on, on record ever. And he's telling us all his love with his fake crocodile tears, which he wasn't even crying. His love for the children. And then to ask, quote, are we really prepared to say that we're powerless in the face of such carnage? That the politics are too hard? No, I'm not. I agree. We need to have change. We need to arm the faculty. And that should be the bare minimum. But again, when you, the school system by itself, which was what Pastor Adams had pointed out with that commentary, you know, atheistic evolution, when you're taught that you basically came from a rock, that somehow, when the rain rained on the rocks and the lightning hit the rock, it formed some two-cell amoeba, spark of life deal, and that eventually turned into an ape, after it slithered out of the ocean, which then turned into Piltdown Man and whatever, into what we are now, well, then, and that there's no God, and, and that, you know, well, if, if you believe that, then what's the point? What, what's the big deal about killing people? We're just all a chance byproduct of nature anyway. There's no God. And so, do what thou will should be the whole of the law, as, as Aleister Crowley said. You know, one of the highest level Satanists in the last hundred years. The great beast. So, again, it says... Um, goes on to say, this is code speak. In other words, are we really prepared to say that we're powerless in the face of such carnage that the politics are too hard? That was what Obama said. This is code speak for gun prohibition schemes now being pushed ultra-aggressively by the anti-gun zealots like Obama, Feinstein, and Bloomberg. And again, normally I don't do teachings like back-to-back teachings on the same subject. Um, I know I've done that on some with Israel. and This is something that, I'm telling you, if they implement this, it, it is going to be mass, mass genocide. It is going to be the cue for, for the red and the blue list, for rounding up into the FEMA camps, for, for anybody that's a, that they dis- term as a dissenter, that believes in the Bible, that believes in the Constitution, that's, that's, that's not you know, pro-abortion, that's not pro-gay, lesbian, transgender, that's not pro-evil. Anybody that would be deemed as a, you know, returning veteran or who or, or, or ex-law uh, enforcement officer that believes in anybody that's pro-Second Amendment, in other words. You know, those are going to be the people that are going to be targeted. It is the absolute linchpin, as the genocide chart that I quoted earlier, it's the linchpin right there. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm harping on this. Because if this if they're able to pull this off, uh, it's literally the beginning of the end re- regarding what they're going to implement. Uh, so, what Obama failed to say in his speech is that the, his own government made the Sandy Hook Elementary School principal powerless to stop the killing by outlawing concealed carry weapons in the so-called gun-free zones. Okay, so see, that's really important, that last statement. Okay, because we want to look at this from a logical standpoint. Okay, what Obama failed to say in the speech is that his own government made the Sandy Hook Elementary School principal powerless to stop the killing. So, in other words, the Obama administration and then obviously the, the administrations that led up to this that have, that have created these um, gun free zones, they're the ones to blame for this. Their blood is on their hands. It's not on my hands. It's not on your hands. It's on their hands. Their solution hasn't worked. Gun-free zones are an absolute target for these mass murders. Because they know they're not, they're not going to have to face return fire. So they've created this situation. They've staged these events. The blood is totally on their hands, and yet they turn around and blame the gun owners for this happening. It's the ultimate in the pot calling the kettle black. Hypocrisy 
And all I'm trying to do right now is just point out the massive amount of hypocrisy and lies and deception. The exact opposite of, of what they're saying, you know, is the solution, is the actual truth. So, um, a gun-free zone is a place where somebody puts up a sign that literally reads gun-free zone, which is just like the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. These signs are not magic. They have no power whatsoever and are not intellectu- in the intellectual equivalent to hocus pocus, delusional thinking, and lucky charms. Quite the contrary. These signs attract killers who know they will not have to deal with return fire. Obviously. Printed signs do not stop psychopathic killers. What stops them, unless God intervenes in another way, is return fire. If school principals if the school principal had been allowed to legally and lawfully carry a concealed firearm at the school, the entire death toll could have been avoided or minimized. Thirty, And that's just the principal, but I mean, if, if let's sev- several of the faculty would have been much better. 32,000 Americans are killed each year in automobile accidents, and the president sheds no tears for them. The deaths aren't on the news. There is... Uh, no call to ban cars to prevent the deaths. Okay, Over 100,000 Americans are killed each year by government-approved pharmaceuticals, and that's probably very conservative. Yet we never see all those dead bodies on the evening news. Well, it serves no agenda. That's part of their agenda, particularly the pharmaceutical end, to kill people with them. The government's whore at Americans dying, it seems, is highly selective. Oh, isn't that convenient? Only people killed with certain kinds of things, such as guns, are keyed on by the federal government. But no, Obama doesn't want to empower principals and school administrators with the means to defend the children, uh, which would protect them. Instead, he wants to strip the firearms from everyone in the nation, even if they are upstanding, law-abiding citizens who help build and protect strong communities. Of course, such gun-grabbing agendas don't strip guns away from the government. It's a selective gun grab that disarms only law-abiding citizens, leaving the government with a monopoly on the firepower and the criminals, because they're always going to find a way to get them, that history has shown inevitably will then turn against its own citizens. And again, that's the genocide chart that I posted. To stop another school shooting, it seems Obama would deliver our nation into a military dictatorship under which no one would be safe from the government itself. And then he goes on to say, why a military dictatorship? Because that's the only way for the government to enforce a nationwide gun confiscation program. So you have to understand where this is all heading. If they're able to do this, if they're able to ban all guns, or even assault weapon bans, what does that mean? Well, that means gun confiscation, man. Now we're talking where the rubber really meets the road. Okay? It's kind of like TSA. TSA right now is primarily in airports. I understand there are, there are other places, but I think when the rubber meets the road with the TSA is when, you, when you're when you literally just trying to travel and you can't avoid it, like on the highways. And they're doing, you know, full body, whatever, grope downs, sexual assaults, or wanting to put, put you through a naked body scanner, and you can't avoid it. This is one of those situations where if they do this, then it's going to be really in your face. It's not going to be something that a lot of people can avoid anymore. So, just something to think about there. So, going further, uh, let's see. It's also, okay, so because that's the only way for the government to enforce nationwide gun confiscation program, they would have to unleash troops on the streets across America and pit many soldiers against their own families in fierce gun battles. Let me tell you, the, ever since this happened, and I was at a gun show not too long ago. I mean, it was packed out. You're not going to be able to get near these things now. The, the the few that have happened since the Sandy Hook shooting, lines out the door from all the reports I'm seeing. I went by a place today, and it's, it's you know, Xmas Eve here. You'd think it's a time when people are kind of just, you know, it's a, it's a place not too far away from where I live. And it's kind of a local gun hunting store, okay? where The area where I live, that's pretty big. 
And a lot of good old boys in there. I've been in there before. And um, it's a place where it's very crowded in there. I mean, they have made maximal amount of use of space in this store. I mean, it is like, it's got more inventory uh, as far as per square inch than about any place I've ever been in. I could not believe the amount of cars that were in the parking lot today when I drove by there. I'm thinking to myself, how could I, if I wanted to go buy a box of ammo, how would I even get in there to buy it? It was that crowded. I have no idea how that many people could have been in that store because, trust me, it is not, they don't have a lot of room in there unless they got some kind of back room I don't know about. (laughs) So, I'm telling you right now, people are, a lot of people are at a fever pitch. They see what's coming, they know what's coming, and they're not going to go quietly. I, 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 and again, this is part, I do believe, of the Illuminati's plan is, is to evoke some kind of civil war, some type of war, uh, against from, you know, maybe the patriot community, some type of race war, or um, probably a combination of all. So, going further here, uh, it's also predictable governments consistently seize on tragedy, tragedy and emotional outpouring to consolidate power for themselves. That's ex- the only reason they're doing this. Obama has now promised to bypass Congress and to, as he explains, use whatever, quote, use whatever power this office holds to engage our citizens to save another child or parent or another town. You lying, fork-tongued, split-hooved devil from the pit of hell. Oh yeah, he's going to start to roll out the old executive orders. He's dictator Obama now, anyway. Second term, don't have to worry about re-election. He was doing this garbage last term. It's only going to get more now. You know, I'm not saying that to be Johnny Raincloud, but I'm just saying this is what his agenda is. And it's pure evil. In other words, he will do anything to stop the death of one more child. Right. Even if it means disarming the entire nation for our own good. And thereby subjecting the citizens to runaway violent crime and government tyranny, which will be the absolute total fruit and byproduct of disarming lawful, law-abiding citizens because the criminals are going to know, hey, there's no guns to fire back at us anymore. We're going to go and uh, rape, kill, destroy, do whatever we want. And then that way, that'll give the government more excuse for more government. Because we got to have more troops in the streets to contain all the criminals now that are coming out of the woodwork like rats because there's nothing to hinder them anymore. This is, uh, this is the non-logic of tyrants. Obama says, quote, we have to change. Implying that he means at any cost, the cost of liberty. If Obama back, and again, I've already told you what the change needs to be. You you arm the faculty. You know, certain amount of faculty, this stuff probably goes to almost nothing as far as these, these types of school shootings. If Obama backs up his words with action, it appears he is about to effectively declare America a military dictatorship where private gun ownership is prohibited by the government. Imagine a nationwide gun turn in mandate. Armed federal raids on homes of farmers and ranchers, Obama declaring anyone who owns a gun to be a terrorist, you get the picture. This is where this is all going to most likely end up. Unless there's massive intervention um, by God and or the public wakes up and resists this with every fiber of their being. And again, this is the linchpin for the, for, for the mass genocide they have planned on this country. And, and any country that would enact this. It's, it's, it's that big of a deal. It really is. So, imagine a nation... Um, okay, I already read that. So, this is where Obama's rhetoric leads us. Anti-gun nuts are loudly calling for mass violence against gun owners and NRA. Now, that's not too hypocritical. On Twitter, Facebook, and elsewhere, left-leaning control freaks are demanding that all gun owners should shoot their own children and that the president of the NRA, National Rifle Association, should be executed. This is the rhetoric of those who claim they love children. Yeah, they're the same ones too that says, kill your baby. It's a woman's choice. It's a woman's right. What about the rights of the baby? 
They're also the, the same ones that say the gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, they need to have equal rights. They need to be getting married just like, you know, anyone else. Every, I mean, the, obviously, I understand, re, Democrat, Republican, okay, um, a big kind of scam there, two sides of the same wicked coin, but obviously, the Republicans or the people that are on that side obviously tend to be more pro-life, tend to be more anti, you know, they're, they're, they're at a, a better morality level than the left, and this is all coming from the left, okay, this push for the gun control, particularly. I'm, I'm sure there's some people that call themselves Republicans that maybe are on board at this point, but for the most part, it's, it's not the case. So, you got all these people up on Facebook and Twitter just going nuts, calling for, I mean, all the stuff I can't even repeat. I saw a lot of the posts, and it's like, you know, the worst cuss words you could imagine, and, and this and that. It's like, we've caused this. The people that law-abiding citizens that want to own guns and want to protect innocent lives. We're the reason for the Sandy Hook shooting. You know? Such outrageous talk of violence, my friends, may combine with Obama's promise to bypass Congress and push America into civil war. Because I can assure you with absolute certainty that there are tens of millions of armed Americans, many are cops, firearms instructors, or returning veterans, who will under no circumstances voluntarily turn in their guns to the government, especially not to the Obama government. Yet emotional, irrational, and historically ignorant anti-gun zealots are now demanding, even screaming, even threatening, that everyone in America must now turn in their guns because of, in this case, the actions of one deranged individual at the Sandy Hook, which the government totally arranged and made sure it happened. And again, we will get to that soon. Here's good old Senator Jay Rockefeller of the Rockefeller Illuminati clan uh, calling for gun control and more psychoactive, psychoactive drugs. The Rockefeller family has been, have been strict gun supporters for gun control for many years. Uh, and they are one of the handful of families who fund and influence the politicians through their manipulation of monetary systems and control of natural resources like land, oil, gold, and diamonds. They belong to the Illuminati aristocratic club that wants to further enslave humanity using the political system. This should be no surprise to the people who are familiar with the history of this family and the nature of gun control. But recently, Rockefeller in the Senate has issued a statement uh, using the recent shooting as an excuse to push for gun control. Right on cue. According to the State Journal, Jay Rockefeller recently issued the following statement. Quote, I voted for the assault weapons ban in 1994. Now this is the ban that did nothing and was proven to do nothing by the government, you know, that let it happen. Uh, that he says, which also included a ban of high capacity uh, clips. He means magazines. Okay, that's the proper term for a, um, a, it's a magazine, it's not a clip. Okay. Anyway, the ban of high-capacity clips, meaning a, a magazine is what you put the bullets in. High-capacity would typically be, uh, depending on the gun, anything 10 or above. Okay, uh, The reason they want to ban high-capacity magazines in these uh, weapons is because they want to make sure they limit your potential to be able to fire back at bad guys. Okay, They want to make sure you have the, l the least amount of bullets in that gun as possible so that whatever nefarious elements that are coming after you will have to, um, you know, won't have to worry about you having, you know, high-capacity magazines where you could defend yourself. That's the reason, okay? So, um, says, this included, a, uh, I'll just read this over. I voted for an assault weapons ban in 1994, which also included a ban of high-capacity clips, and it's unacceptable that it hasn't been reauthorized. Oh, yeah, like it did so much good the first time. We need to pass a bill that will, again, prohibit such weapons, end of quote. In addition, Rockefeller discussed the need to funnel more people into the state-sanctioned and tax-funded mental health program, which has worked so wonderfully, we'll talk about that in a second as well, which would undoubtedly include the distribution of more harmful psychoactive drugs that have been known to play a major role in violent crimes. And we're going to prove that in a second, and we have proved that in the past. The very drugs they're putting people on predispose them to all of this satanic, uh, violent behavior because you're dealing with pharmacia, you're dealing with um, the root word for sorcery in the Bible, these pharmacological a agents that literally have a demonic component to them. And when you take them, 
you know, causes real bad things. So, going further, um, President Barack Obama announced today that he asked Vice President, the Vice President, Joe Biden, to lead an effort that includes members of my cabinet and outside organizations to come up with a set of concrete proposals no later than January. Proposals that I intend to push without delay, end of quote. This is the big one. This is one of the main, in our lifetime, in America, if you live in America, this is one of the main linchpin moments for our freedom, our liberty, on the cusp of just being totally wiped off the face of the earth. This issue. And again, I say that because I can look back at history and see what happens when they disarm a populace. Every time it's going to happen. And particularly in America, they've been waiting to do this for a long time. One of the last things the Illuminati has been waiting on is the destruction of the middle class of America. The lower class is already totally dependent on the government. Okay? You know, record, record, record numbers of people on welfare, totally dependent on the state. The government's not so much worried about them because those people typically, and I don't mean to demonize a whole group of people, but they're typically going to go along with what the government tells them to do because the government, they're not going to bite the hand that's feeding them. And they want to create this, and this is a big reason why the economy is tanked and and things have gotten the way they are. and, and, and It's all by design to create a gigantic swath of the population in America totally dependent on the government so that when whatever the government tells them to do, they're going to go along with it like sheep to the slaughter. The middle class, and particularly, let's say, the, um, the, the middle class, that's the, the, and particularly the ones that lean, obviously, to the right, the, the, the pro-Constitution, the pro-Bible, the pro-Second um, Amendment, you know, pro-anti-abortion, uh, anti-gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, anti-evil crowd. That's the ones they're really after. Okay? And um, I, I know I'm, I'm sure I've left out some people in that, but this is why they're, they're doing all of this. So he goes on to say, so he's saying that he's tapped Joe Biden, who obviously is the second in command here, uh, and I've never seen him do this with Joe Biden before. I mean, so this is how serious Obama's taking this. They're, they're going to come up with concrete proposals no later than January. He wants to make maximum use of this second term to do as much horrific damage as he possibly can. And he says proposals that I intend to push without delay. They are going to use this crisis and all the crises he's coming. They're going to throw logic out the window like they've done already and like they will continue to do and hope that, that they can just foist this on the American populace. And then he, then he goes on to state, but make no mistake, Obama made it clear, quote, this is not some Washington commission, end of quote. Instead, according to the president, this is a team that has a very specific task to pull together real reforms right now. They're not, they're not going to mess around on this. Okay, I asked Joe, Joe Biden, to lead this effort in part because he wrote the 1994 crime bill that was useless. Okay, that plan, that bill also included an assault weapons ban. Okay, and they have to use the word assault like, oh, you have one of these and you're going to assault somebody, you know, which is total garbage. Uh, Obama believes the American people are on his side. He said, well, hey, when you can rig every poll out there, and when you rig your own election, and when you totally control the media, you can say whatever you want. He said, quote, the good news is there's already a growing consensus for us to build from. So he's got a growing consensus of sheeple people that are going to go along with whatever he says. Okay. Uh, Said Obama, a majority of Americans support banning the sale of military-style assault weapons. A majority of Americans support banning the sale of high-capacity ammunition clips. Okay, even if they're able to supposedly just pull that off, it's just the beginning. It's absolutely just the beginning. Okay, you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. Every single time. Okay, then they'll have another gigantic catastrophe that they'll create. And then, oh, now we got to ban it all. Sorry. I mean, we tried. The assault weapons ban didn't work. The high-capacity magazines didn't work. 
you know, these guns, they just keep sprouting legs and killing people indiscriminately, and it's just the guns' fault, the guns are bad, the guns are evil, we just gotta ban guns, period. And we know it's best for you, because we're your, you know, benevolent dictator rulers, and, and we would never, you know, foist anything evil upon you. So, uh, I'm way over time on part one, so I'm gonna end part one here, and we'll go to part two next. Scott Johnson's weekly audios are available for free 24-7 on the internet at contendingfortruth.com. That's C-O-N-T-E-N-D-I-N-G-F-O-R-T-R-U-T-H dot com. Please help us continue this work. To support this ministry, our mailing address is Scott Johnson, 2nd Line, 450 Conover, C-O-N-O-V-R, Boulevard West. Number 202, Third Line, Conover, North Carolina, 28613. Or on the internet, PayPal can be used at contendingfortruth.com. Thank you, and may the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you.